Slicer is an eight-step sequencer with a large range of unique features. This video will cover only a few specific patch techniques in depth, focusing heavily on manual changes and live performance. On the right of the screen is a complete list of all the features that the Mux Slicer has to offer. This video will cover only the highlighted ones. We recommend watching other Mux Slicer videos so that you may have a broader understanding of the module's entire functionality. In all of the following patch examples, we'll be using the OR gates out signal as our kick trigger. The first function that we'll be covering is gate mode. This potentiometer multiplies or slices the output triggers per step. At its maximum value, gate mode will slice each step into eight gates. And at its minimum value, it will bypass each gate per step, creating silence. We can play, roll, or silence the trigger with the movement of a single knob. Here we have a visual display of gate mode values. Gate mode is intuitive in that at all times, the internal clock is still continuing and synchronized. This means that whenever the signal is multiplied, stopped, or restarted, the sequence will continue to be in time. Gate mode is also CV able. In this example, our control voltage signal is this LFO. This creates a somewhat random feel to the triggers. However, it's not actually random. So this can be fine tuned in order to achieve complex grooves and unique sequences. Now we will proceed to use the Mux Slicer's control voltage output as our gate mode CV. The common IO port has three functions. Two of these functions are within its bi-directional analog switch. The Mux Slicer can be used to multiplex or demultiplex, and we'll be discussing this more later in this video. But for now, when not using the bi-directional analog switch, the third function of the common IO activates, a voltage out source. This takes each of the eight steps as a voltage signal with an adjustable range relevant to the position of the fader of that step. In this example, we've set it to the maximum value of zero to 10 volts. Using this as our gate mode CV, the fader relevant to its own step is the voltage control for that step's gate multiplication. Essentially, when the fader is up, that step's gate will multiply, and when it's down, that step's gate will close, and when it's close to the middle, it will just play. This is intuitive because each fader controls the gate relevant to its own step in real time. The second feature we'll be covering is the clock encoder and clock out. If an external clock signal is not being used, the Mux Slicer's internal clock is controlled by this encoder. The BPM can be changed in increments by spinning the encoder, but it also includes tap tempo, so we can completely change the BPM in a double tap. Whether you're using an external or the internal clock, the clock out signal is a multiplication or division of that BPM. This multiplication or division can be changed from powers of two or entire numbers. For example, in the power of two setting, the multiplication will always double and the division will always half. In the setting that we're currently using, you can multiply and divide the BPM value by whole numbers, allowing us to create polyrhythms amongst other things. The value of this multiplication or division is changed by spinning the encoder while holding it down. In all of these patch examples, the clock out is triggering a hi-hat, and we'll be multiplying and dividing that trigger manually mid-performance. And lastly, we'll dive into some multiplexing. But maybe you ask, what is multiplexing? Multiplexing takes multiple signals and combines them into one. Demultiplexing takes one signal and disperses it into multiple signals. For the Mux Slicer, this is eight signals to one when multiplexing and one signal to eight when demultiplexing. To multiplex, send a signal into any of the Mux IOs or into the all in. This signal will then route to the common IO. In all of our patch examples, we have sent a snare triggered on every step into the all in. When multiplexing or demultiplexing, faders behave as step volume control. This is a particularly unique feature that the Mux Slicer offers. Using the faders, we can silence or raise the volume of our multiplex signal for any given step.
consider this a comfortable and intuitive way of creating patterns and groove where velocity can be changed manually in real time. Okay, now let's go deeper. The mux inputs allow you to replace their relevant step with a new sound, similar to choking. Take this sound for example. Now we will take some of our gate out signals to trigger a different snare and layer it with our first snare. Now our patch is using individual gate outs for one shots, the all in for multiplexing, the mux ins for choking, with our faders as volume control. This gives us a powerful tool for creating complex percussive patterns and modifying their groove in real time. And to finalize, we'll be combining all of the above features and get creative, as if we were playing a live performance.